According to the Wall Street Journal, there are about 7,400 stocks listed in the New York Stock Exchange and the Nasdaq combined. In other words, there are a lot of stocks to choose from. But if someone comes to me and say, Riado, if you could choose only one stock and hold it for the next 10 years, which stock would that be? Well, for me, the stock needs to fulfill two simple but important criteria. First, does the company have strong fundamentals? That means having solid financials, durable competitive advantages as well as operates in a large and growing industry. And secondly, is the stock undervalued with the potential to grow 10x or even 100x in 10 years? With that being said, there's one particular stock that I can confidently say yes to both questions and that is Hims and Hers, which is a fast-growing telehealth company disrupting the healthcare industry. Three months ago, I talked about Hims and Hers being one of, if not the most undervalued small cap growth stock that you can buy. And since that video, the stock is up nearly 100%. And that's thanks to its most recent earnings report, which sent the stock soaring 30% in a single trading day. But even with the recent rally over the last three months, I still think the stock is undervalued and offers massive upside potential for investors. So without further ado, let's take a look at the company's Q4 results and talk about why Hims and Hers is still a great buy. As always, you can read the article version of this analysis which goes much more into detail into Hims and Hers and I will leave the link in the description box below so do check that out. Alright, looking at Q4 results. Hims generated a revenue of $247 million in Q4, up by 47% year over year, which was in line with analyst estimates and management's guidance. As you can see, growth has slowed down quite a bit, but that's just a natural consequence of being a larger company. That being said, a 47% growth in Q4 is still robust given very tough year-over-year -year comms with the company nearly doubling year-over-year -year in Q4 of 2022. So growth was mainly driven by higher online revenue as a result of the company's growing subscriber base. As you can see, Hims and Hers ended the year with 1.5 million subscribers up by 48% year-over-year. On a quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis, the company added 111,000 subscribers, which is really great given the fact that strong subscriber growth is often a leading indicator of future revenue growth. That said, most of the growth came from multi-month subscribers, which grew 65% year-over-year to 1.2 million, whereas single-month subscribers grew only 4% year-over-year to 295,000. So this reflects the company's strategy on making longer duration plans more attractive for subscribers, which was achieved through the price cuts that was initiated in Q2 last year. And that's why you see a major deceleration in the growth in single month subscribers as compared to multi-month subscribers starting in Q2 last year. So as a result of more multi-month subscribers, we can see that monthly online revenue per average subscriber dropped by 4% year-over-year to $53 in Q4. In addition, net orders grew by only 24% year-over-year to $2.3 million as multi-month subscribers ordered less frequently than single-month subscribers. On the other hand, average order value or AOV increased by 18% year-over-year to $103 and this is expected since multi-month plans are generally priced higher than single-month plans. While some might be concerned about the slowdown in the first two metrics, it's important to note that the shift towards longer duration plans will be net beneficial for Hims and Hers, since higher average order values means that the company will be paid more upfront. So from a cash flow perspective, it's good for Hims and Hers since they can use that money to reinvest into the business right away. So all in all, another strong quarter in terms of growth, which reflects the company's unique value proposition and momentum. More importantly, Hims and Hers strong execution quarter after quarter enabled the company to gain even more market share from other telehealth providers. As you can see, this chart shows the market share of observed total customers between primary telehealth providers in the sexual health, dermatology, and mental health categories. This includes companies like BetterHelp, which is owned by Teladoc, as well as Roman Health, which is owned by Roe. As you can see, Roman Health saw its market share drop from 21% in 2020 
to just 12% in 2023, while BetterHelp saw its market share remains pretty much unchanged at just 14% in the last three years. On the other side, Hims and Hers is taking massive market share, expanding from 14% in 2020 to 49% in 2023, which is absolutely massive. So it's really great to see that Hims and Hers is eating its competitors' lunch and imagine how much more market share Hims and Hers can take from healthcare incumbents. Looking at profitability, the main headline of the earnings report is that Hims and Hers turned gap net income profitable for the first time ever with a net income of $1 million which is a 1% net income margin. I think management guided for gap profitability in the first half of 2024 so the market was pleasantly surprised when the company turned gap profitable one or two quarters early. This was due to the company's high gross margin of 83% which expanded 400 basis points year over year as well as continued operating leverage even despite the price cuts that management initiated back in Q2 last year. Clearly, this is a big milestone for the company and I think profitability will only get better from here, so really excited for what's to come for Hims and hers. We can see the same thing for adjusted EBITDA, which adds back non-cash expenses such as stock-based compensation and depreciation and amortization. In Q4, adjusted EBITDA was $21 million at an 8% adjusted EBITDA margin which expanded 600 basis points as you can see right here. Again, this was due to higher gross margin and operating leverage, more specifically leverage gains on general and administrative expenses which improved by 3 percentage points year over year. But as for the other OPEX items, they were pretty much flat year over year. This includes marketing expenses, which represents a hefty 50% of the company's revenue. Taking a closer look at marketing expenses, I have compiled Hims and Hers customer acquisition costs or CAC as well as new subscribers added in each quarter. So if we take the first column and divide it by the second column, we get CAC per new subscriber or how much Hims and Hers has to spend on average to acquire a new subscriber. As you can see, CAC per new subscriber was $965 in Q4 and this number seems pretty high when you compare it to last year's number of $589 and the previous quarter's figure of $783. So on the surface, it doesn't look good at all. It looks like the company's marketing department is getting more and more inefficient by the quarter. But here's why I think CAC per new subscriber went up a lot in Q4. So as you may or may not know, I follow meta platforms as well which could give us a clue on the advertising market and ultimately Hims and Hers marketing economics. So on the right here, I have included meta's advertising revenue by quarter and by year at the bottom right here. So by looking at meta's advertising segment, we can observe how the advertising market is behaving and therefore how it affects Hims and Hers CAC numbers. As you can see, Meta's advertising revenue dropped 1% year-over-year in 2022 which means that there's lower ad demand in 2022 which gave Hims and Hers more favorable pricing for ad placements thus lowering CAC in 2022. However, in the next year, the global advertising market rebounded in 2023 as seen by the 16% increase in Meta's advertising revenue in 2023. So this means that there's higher ad demand in 2023 which led to higher CAC for Hims and Hers as you can see right here. And take note that the rebound in the ad market is more prominent in the back half of 2023 growing by 24% year over year and that's why CAC per new subscriber seems elevated in the last few quarters. In addition to that, there's typically high ad demand in Q4 due to the holiday season which consequently increased CAC numbers for Hims and Hers. So because of these three reasons, Hims and Hers CAC per new subscriber appears higher than usual which might have turned off some investors. But moving forward, I do expect the metric to improve as the ad market stabilizes but the point is, volatility in the ad market is causing some fluctuations in Hims and Hers marketing efficiency so don't get too worried about it. On the bright side, payback period which is defined as CAC divided by gross profit was 0.52 years or 6 months in Q4 which is a slight improvement year over year and quarter over quarter. 
This means that Hims and Hers is getting their money back faster. So while CAC per new subscriber seems elevated, payback period remains at healthy levels, which is great to see. And with a payback period of just 6 months, I see why Hims and Hers is maintaining high marketing spend at 50% of revenue to maximize subscriber growth, which again is a leading indicator of future revenue growth. That aside, Hims and Hers has just turned gap net income profitable and that alone should eliminate any concerns about the company's scalability and marketing efficiency. Turning to the balance sheet, the company has $221 million of cash and short-term investments with $10 million of total debt which puts its net cash position at about $211 million as of Q4. Moving forward, I expect net cash balance to expand over the next few quarters and years as profitability and cash flows continue to improve. In Q4, free cash flow was $13 million, representing a free cash flow margin of 5%, which expanded 10 percentage points year over year, but dropped by 5 percentage points quarter over quarter. So a major reason for the sequential drop in free cash flow margin is due to higher capital expenditures as the company ramp up investments to expand its product portfolio, as well as to improve the efficiency of its affiliated pharmacies. But overall, nothing much to say here but Hims and Hers continues to maintain a pristine balance sheet with an improving free cash flow profile which helps me sleep well at night. So we have robust growth, gap net income profitability, and strong balance sheet. But that's not all. On top of strong Q4 results, management also provided strong 2024 guidance that were well above expectations. At the high end of management's guidance, management expects Q1 revenue of $272 million, up by 43% year-over-year, which beat analyst estimates of just $253 million, which is nearly an 8% difference. Management also expects Q1 adjusted EBITDA of $27 million at a 10% margin, up from 8% in Q4, so management expects continued operating leverage from here. For the full year, management expects 2024 revenue of $1.2 billion, up by 38% year-over-year, beating analyst estimates of $1.1 billion, which is $100 million above analyst expectations. More importantly, this $1.2 billion guide is actually management's target in 2025, so they're expecting to achieve their 2025 revenue target of $1.2 billion a year early, which is just incredible. And then for adjusted EBITDA, they're expecting $120 million, which also suppresses management's 2025 adjusted EBITDA target of $100 million a year early. But I still think this is too conservative. So they're expecting adjusted EBITDA margin to remain stable throughout the year at just 10%. In my opinion, I think Hims and Hers can do at least $150 million of adjusted EBITDA at a 12% margin as the company continues to scale and gain operating leverage. As you can tell, guidance is really strong, both in terms of growth and profitability, but what's even more exciting is what lies ahead for Hims and Hers in the next 5-10 to 10 years. More specifically, management discussed the potential to bring in tens of millions of users on the Hims and Hers platform against its total addressable market of 100 million consumers in the US. As a reminder, Hims and Hers has 1.5 million subscribers as of Q4, which is tiny compared to management's goal of achieving 10 million subscribers, but that's more than possible given the momentum of the business and the size of its addressable market. To get to 10 million, management intends to make Hims and Hers a mass market offering. They will leverage the scale and pass on the savings to consumers in the form of lower prices over time thus leading to a lower gross margin profile in the mid-70s. That is down from 83%, but that's okay because better prices will attract way more subscribers into the platform, ultimately accelerating their path towards 10 million subscribers. I don't know when the company will achieve that 10 million mark, but what I do know is that management sounded very confident in achieving that goal, and that's what really matters. If management has the conviction, we investors will also have the conviction. It could be 5 years or 10 years, but whatever it is, 
through its growing scale, strong brand, unique platform, extensive data set, and personalized offerings, Hims and Hers is in a great position to fulfill its ambition of acquiring 10 million users, eventually becoming the one-stop shop for all things medical care. Now let's talk about valuation. As you know, the stock rallied 30% plus following Q4 earnings, most likely due to the company turning gap profitable and issuing strong guidance. But even with that 30% rally, Hims and Her still trades at an EV to revenue multiple of just 2.2 times, which is incredibly cheap for a company that is growing rapidly, has massive growth potential, has gross margins of 80% plus, has software-like revenue, has zero debt, and has now just turned profitable. Personally, I think Hims and Hers should be trading at about five times its revenue, which is more than 100% upside potential from here. In addition, institutions have been buying the stock over the last few months and years, and now that the company is gap net income profitable, I think we can expect more institutional buying, which should push the stock even higher. As for me, I'm raising my one-year price target for Hims and Hers from $23 in my previous video to $28. This is based on the assumption that the company reaches $4.9 billion of revenue by 2033, which I believe is less than 20% compounded annual growth rate, which is quite conservative. I also expect a long-term free cash flow margin of 20.5%, which is at the very low end of management's long-term adjusted EBITDA margin target of 20 to 30%. And based on a perpetual growth rate of 2.5% and a discount rate of 12%, I get a price target of $28 a share for Hims and Hers, which is more than 100% upside potential from its current price of $13. I've also included my bear and bull cases here, which also shows that Hims and Hers is severely undervalued. So if I had to choose one stock and hold it for the next 10 years, Hims and Hers would be that stock. And here's why. The company has strong and improving fundamentals with robust growth, high margins, no debt, massive growth potential, and most recently, gap net income profitability. Management has done nothing but execute, execute, and execute, and they're even more hungry to grow the platform to more than 10 million subscribers. And now the market is starting to realize Hims and Her's true potential as a telehealth disruptor rather than a cheap generic drug online retailer and I think the company's Q4 results really woke the market up. And despite the recent rally, Hims and Hers still trades at depressed valuations with the potential to 10x in the next 10 years. That being said, if I had to choose just one stock to hold on for the next 10 years, Hims and Hers would easily be my pick. Now let me ask you the same question. If you could only choose one stock and hold it for the next 10 years, which stock would that be? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's all that I have for you today. Appreciate you all and I see you guys in the next video.